When we move our bodies, we can change our moods and our mind, and vice versa. Movement produces new neural pathways that expand possibilities. The brain and the body do not operate independently. So, even if you never show up in a dance class, which you should, remember this, that movement can be a tool for transformation and file it away for some time when you're stressed or tired or studying or working on a project that feels like it will never end. Maybe you'll do the hokey pokey, maybe it'll be something else, but stand up, move a little, shake it off, couldn't resist a little T-Swift wisdom there. Remind yourself how capable you are and re-engage. You got this. People will tell you to seek balance in your lives, and I'll come back to balance later, but folks will give you this advice as if you, if you, if you strike the perfect balance, you'll be able to avoid stress altogether. Newsflash, you won't. Stress is, but stress is not always and only the enemy. It is a biological phenomenon it's how animals in the wild survive as they activate their sympathetic nervous systems or what you might know as the fight or flight responses. And at some point, many points in your college juniors, you will encounter stress. What if instead of doing everything we can to avoid stress at all costs, we let it animate and motivate us? As psychologist Samantha Boardman suggests in a book that she subtitles, Turning Stress into Strength. In that book, she cites three things that have the capacity to help address and transform stress. One, meaningful interpersonal connections. Two, experiences that challenge us. And three, contributing to something beyond ourselves. She says, in order to center yourself, you sometimes need to decenter yourself. And tells us that one antidote to stress can simply be doing something nice for somebody else. So remember that as a tool, too. Decenter yourself and practice kindness to keep help stress at bay. Now, even though college will create some stress, it's also structured to make possible each of those three things. Challenges, contributing to something outside ourselves, and relationships. In a book called How College Works, our sociologist colleagues from Hamilton College highlight mentorship and social engagement as key factors that have a significant impact on learning. So as you navigate these first few weeks and the next four years, keep building connections with one another, with faculty and staff mentors, and with the community at large. Feeling good about those relationships just might help you be a better student. Because of course, the primary reason you're here is to continue to be excellent students. In order to keep doing that, your job in college is a little bit harder though, as it should be, right? A liberal arts education invites you to explore ideas and disciplines and even the edges between dif disciplines liberally or freely. We have distribution requirements at Colby, not so that you can check boxes, but so that you can accumulate diverse experiences, ways of thinking, reasoning, and asking questions. We hope you will surprise yourselves. We hope you will uncover new ways to assemble ideas with an ever-expanding category of what you know pointing you towards and carrying you into the unknown. That cycle of exploration and production is learning. A liberal arts education is, at its heart, a creative process. In the creative process, we explore, translate, transform, and illuminate ideas. Director Ann Bogart writes, the artist's job is to stay alive and awake in the space between convictions and certainties. The truth in art exists in the tensions between contrasting realities. But contrasting realities don't only exist in the arts, and creativity doesn't only happen in the arts. It happens everywhere, in every discipline. Do you guys know what TED Talks are? I know they're not really a thing anymore. But <laughs> the most watched TED Talk of all time from 2006, which for most of you is just barely within your lifetime, but addresses systems that have not changed, is called How Schools Kill Creativity. In it, uh, British scholar Sir Ken Robinson basically points out that because educational systems punish mistakes, they squelch e experimentation and risk-taking, which is exa exactly what will be asked of you in college and in your careers. At Colby, faculty will ask you to test limits, to expand and cross boundaries, 
to make mistakes, to put forward hypotheses, and to be prepared to prove yourself wrong. Because we know that's how learning happens and how disciplines evolve in every field. The job of those of us teaching creative disciplines, then, is to teach students to recognize and engage in rigorous creative processes, which certainly will serve careers in the arts, but equally as importantly, lead to ways of thinking that can be much more broadly applied. And you know what? My colleagues over there teaching computer science or geology or African American studies or history or economics, and I won't list every department at Colby, but you get the point, they all do that too. We use disciplinary tools and content to strategically develop skills that can be applied in other areas as well. Here, no matter what you major in, you will be prepared to do a lot of different things. And most of you will, because career paths more often meander than they follow a straight line. A relatively recent study by McKinsey and company um, conducted in 15 countries with uh, about 18,000 interviews sought to um, identify what they consider to be the most um, foundational skills that will help future workers thrive. The skills people would need for the future of work. Do you know how many they found? 56. That's 56 foundational skills. That's just the basics. That's before all the other stuff that is like, you know, important to each job. No one is going to build all of those 56 skills in one single area. And that is why the liberal arts are so, are so successful in sending out graduates into the world to make a difference in such a wide variety of fields. That is why you are at Colby. It's to develop insatiable appetite for asking questions and the tools to find and meander down the pathways in pursuit of something that will help you address each new question. Harvard aesthetics professor Elaine Scarry writes, the willingness to continually revise one's own location in order to place oneself in the path of beauty is the basic impulse underlying education. One submits oneself to other minds, teachers, in order to increase the chance that one will be looking in the right direction when a comet makes it sweep through a certain patch of sky. Some of you might find faculty a little intimidating, some of you don't. But know that we are so happy to have you here and we are here to know you. We are here to support who you are now and who you are in the process of becoming. That is very different from what you will be. We are here to help turn you towards the comment, not to experience it for it, for, not to experience it for you. In the meantime, you will certainly do the same for us. My colleagues and I are here because teaching and research are both enterprises of pursuit. We are a community that aspires always to be better, more inclusive, more sensitive, more bold. And we don't always get it right. But if we did, you wouldn't be here and neither would we, because you are now all central to the way this community of which you are a part will evolve both with grace and all the bumps that are necessary as we move towards making our community and our world better. If I were making a reel or something, this next thing would probably be filed under the category of unpopular opinions. But here's my problem with people um, suggesting that we find balance. If I were to tell you to stand up again, which I won't do, but um, and close your eyes and stand on one leg. You would quickly feel your body, via your proprioceptors, seeking balance, not attaining it, shifting, wobbling, and continually readjusting to maintain an imperfect version of something balance-like. Balance is dynamic and contains movement. It is not stasis. Physically, finding balance means refinding it anew at each moment as the various weights you support shift. To continue this metaphor, imbalance is actually the thing that propels us into action. If you want to walk and you're standing with your weight evenly distributed on two feet, you have to shift to one side through a state of imbalance in order to progress in any direction, which, as any defender knows, committing to making that step forward might not always be the best choice. Your sense of life balance will change many times at Colby and beyond, and know that while some factors are beyond your control, yes, you have to do your homework, ultimately you are the one 
who gets to make choices that impact those shifts. Don't let somebody else tell you what you are and especially what you are not capable of taking on to protect you from doing their perception of what might be too much. That is your decision, even if you meet your edges sometimes. You really don't know where the edge of the cliff is until you walk right up to it, right? We ask you to take risks, and so part of our job is to support you as you do so. And, you've heard this already today, you need things in your life that challenge you, inspire you, and bring you joy. Colby has extraordinary resources. While you are here, you will certainly come across more opportunities than you could possibly take advantage of. So you will have to make choices, but don't let somebody else caution you away from an experience that will matter to you. Instead, manage your time, ride through the imbalance, and take it on. I'm inching toward the end here with a little plug for the campus-wide humanities theme, which is play, and that's an opportunity to connect that sense of joyful ex experimentation with academic work. Take advantage of the opportunity to let help let this theme inform your sense of what you should be doing at college. If you go to the Center for Arts and Humanities website, you can find out more. I recommend the one credit seminar on Monday nights that lets you hear from scholars, including me, <laughs> from a variety of disciplines. My talk will be about how I've leveraged scholarship on play to, uh, in my work on improvisation to connect the aesthetic properties of imperfection with ethical action through what I call productive friction. So don't shy away from friction here. To recap, little bits of advice. Move your body, move your mood. Let stress motivate you. When it's weighing you down, instead do something nice for somebody else. Embrace meaningful relationships. Uh, seek imbalance as an opportunity. Explore and play. I'm gonna close by reading you excerpts of a community post by a colleague that I've turned to many times in the last 12 years to provide a guidepost for what matters to me most as an educator. This was during the international justice-oriented Occupy movements of 2011, which some of you may remember. You are also relatively young, so you can look it up if you wanna know more. Bartlett Professor of Anthropology, Catherine Besterman wrote, the conversation, Occupy Colby, today revealed just how afraid we are as individuals of deviating from a normative understanding of success, an understanding that equates success with monetary and material wealth. Many of us are profoundly dissatisfied with this definition of success, but feel unable to step away from it. How can we help fashion a different definition of success? that acknowledges as important things like passion, aesthetic delights, quality relationships, mutuality, community embed embeddedness, reciprocity, and dare I say it, love. Engaging with any community, including this one, is never tidy, nor should it be, because there are always inequities that will need to be addressed and because balance is about movement, not stasis. We want to celebrate difference and plurality and the kinds of discussions that challenge us and move us deeper into, towards, and through the problems of the world, not away from them. So, you are a part of that. Get to know one, one another, celebrate achievements, identify problems, and speak up. Be curious, creative, caring, risky, playful, and kind. And this is super corny, but I couldn't resist. If you know the full Hokey Pokey song, Put your whole self in, because my friends, that really is what it's all about. Have a great first day of classes tomorrow. Welcome to Colby.